McFarlane Toys Wave 2 Gunslinger Spawn. This is a figure that I wasn't going to review because it had already been reviewed so many times over, but after reading the Gunslinger comic, I felt like I had something new to bring to the table. Did you know that Gunslinger Spawn keeps 12 razor sharp knives in his top hand? Did you know that Gunslinger Spawn also keeps a ton of other knives in his jacket? Did you know that Gunslinger Spawn coats his bullets in his own blood in order to maintain an edge over his demonic and angelic enemies? If any of this sounded even remotely interesting to you, you need to check out this review of Gunslinger Spawn. Alright, let's take a look at the packaging. You have your standard McFarlane large windowed boxes, which are awesome. I'm glad he's still sticking with this uh, option versus, you know, what Hasbro is doing. I understand they're trying to save on plastic, but it kind of sucks for the collectors. But what can you do? So, on the bottom, you have your barcode. You guys take a look at that. And on the packaging, on the back of the packaging, you have a nice large figure photograph which is absolutely awesome, showcasing our guy Gunslinger. 22 points of our moving articulation. And on the sides, as you can see, I have another figure photo and spawn. And it looks absolutely awesome from the record-breaking comic. Tot will never let you forget. All right, let's crack it open. Oh, before I do, they also have an illustration on the side by Brent Booth. I believe this is Brent Booth. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. Someone in the comments correct me if that's not Brent Booth. Nothing crazy. Wasn't too difficult. In the box you also have your typical McFarlane circular stand which are handy because sometimes these figures do not want to stand up. Oh and also please make sure that you have scissors handy when you're taking these things apart because these tabs in here are hard to get off with your hand. All right, and here he is out in the wild, Gunslinger Spawn. Look at him. This guy looks absolutely ready to kick some butt. And yes, he does. If you ever read any of the Gunslinger comics, I highly recommend it. It's a really cool series. Uh, I was definitely blown back, blown away, I should say, by how cool of a character he is. He's like Clint Eastwood meets Spawn. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So just to give you an idea of what he looks like out of the packaging, he definitely suffers from some box distortion, I would say, because out of the packaging, he looks amazing. The details, I'm really glad that I got a box that didn't have a lot of bleeding in the paint. I mean, these details here are a little bit harder to avoid those type of issues, but it looks pretty good. And then he also has some additional... I guess those are spikes there too. These weren't painted. Um, and then on his uh, bandolier, on his legs, I guess you call it, he's got some additional pouches there. He's got some additional pouches, signature spawn pouches there, a knife. And on his boots, he's also got some more spikes. And then he has his spikes there for his riding and on the boot there. So for, I guess, kicking, I hope he's not kicking a horse with that. Um, yeah, just really great sculpt work. I mean, the cape, the way it flows, it's not a cape. It is a jacket, but it definitely resembles a very classic Spawn cape. Um, a lot of people don't know, but Spawn is... It's not just Al Simmons. It could be a number of different people. It could be anyone. Anyone who makes a deal with Mal Bulger. Um One thing that really sets him apart from Al Simmons Spawn is that he is not from our time period. He is from a completely different time period. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I highly recommend checking out the Gunslinger Spawn comic. It is really cool. All right, let's get a look at his accessories. All right, and you have his rifle, his repeater rifle. It is looking super sick. Thankfully, mine wasn't super warped out of the box. Check out the detail there. Nice skull. Very minimal bleeding in the paint too. I mean, this is just really nice the sculpt work they did here. Just really detail. I'm sure that you could bring probably some more of that out with a nice little wash if you wanted to, but this is a really nice rifle, I would say. Looks definitely ready to kick some butt or some demons. But and you also have his rifle holster, which is completely devoid of any paint, which is a bummer, but you can definitely touch that up if you want to. Uh, it's very simple, but it's full of detail. 
I think they definitely did a great job uh, with the sculpt work here. Tons of detail. Again, a wash would definitely probably bring out the details here even better. And you can see the individual holes for the belt loop. Very nice. And then last but not least, we have his dual Colts. These look really sick. Look at the skulls and the wood handle. What a cool detail. These are, man, these look like they could take, I mean, you could take on anything with these. Very nice detail. I think they did a great job here. These pistols look very fearsome. And if you look closely, I don't know if I can get in there. It's really close. It actually says spawn right there, I believe. It says it on the other side. Super hard to see. Let me get in there. I don't know if I can focus that closely. But yeah, that is, look at that. Very nice. And the, the plastic is not too flimsy. It's your tip. It's not quite your typical, I would say, not your typical McFarlane accessory flimsy. But it definitely has a good degree of bend in there. All right, now for some articulation. Uh, he is your typical McFarlane figure. He has great range. Arms move up about that far. He has a wrist swivel. I mean, I'm sorry, and a arm swivel. Full 360 and back. Double jointed arms. His wrist, unfortunately, is just a swivel wrist. He does not have a hinge on the wrist. Um, one of the pluses is there's no ugly ball joint there. I guess that's really the only plus. His head, full 360. His head goes up about that far. It goes down about that far. Again, the head is not removable. He can kick out about that far. About that far. Which, eh, I guess a cowboy's not doing too much kicking. Um, <laughs> and he has double jointed knees. Which, I have not added any heat to this, so this is as is, out of the box. So that's not too bad. And he has not much of an ankle swivel. So he's a pretty stiff guy. He's not going to be super flexible. Uh, but you can still get him into some pretty cool poses. And he has a toe bend. So yeah, he is not going to be super flexible. Alright, and as far as his waist goes... His ab crunch is severely impeded, not necessarily by anything, I would say more so it's just the added amount of sculpt here. If this was trimmed down a bit, he'd probably have a little bit more of an ab crunch. And then as far as his waist goes, that is, you know, he's pretty flexible in the waist. You can get some nice rotation on him there. And that is about all of his, he does not have a thigh swivel, well he does there, but not an actual cut here for, for any rotation. So he is definitely not going to be a good fit for any future McFarlane horses, hint, hint, wink, wink, as you know, is on the way. I say he does a great job of holding his weapons as well. The hands do come in a trigger fashion, of course. I think he looks pretty good holding the guns, and I think he probably would lend himself pretty well to some good poses. Uh, probably hold them like that. Oh, that looks pretty cool. He's he's just like got a stoic posed look to him. I think he would he would definitely stand out in anyone's collection. He is just a really good looker, I would say. He doesn't really even need much. And then his rifle goes in his hand pretty well too. I'm sure you could get it into some pretty cool poses. Again, he's just a real stoic looking guy. You know, he just poses extremely well. He looks like he is out for blood. But in the comics, he has a sense of justice. He is not just a pure anti-hero like Al Simmons. He actually has a voice for good, and he wants redemption. Also, his gun fits into his holster very snugly, so you don't have to worry about it falling off, or falling out, falling out, I should say. So it fits really well into his holster. And then his rifle sling is, well, I guess that's what I'm going to call it, fits pretty snugly into his case as well. Doesn't fall out. Nice. Gunslinger Spawn is quite a tall figure. I would arrange, he, with his hat, he probably touches probably close to 8 inches tall, just about. Here we have the NECA Toys Pinhead. 
we have the Eternal Stena, who is about six inches and six or six and a half inches tall. We have Red Hood from the Three Jokers line of McFarlane, and then we have the Diamond Selects Dr. Ford. Um, so this is just to give you an idea of the scale of, between these different brands. Yeah, he is tall. We have Sergeant Slaughter. We have Samuel Jackson coming in at six inches. These two figures are six inches. And then we have the Mattel DKR Batman, Armored Batman, and this guy is still absolutely towering over them. He is well over eight inches tall. In conclusion, Gunslinger Spawn is an awesome figure that any collector who has even the remotest interest in the character should pick up. He is not too difficult to pick up. He's still on store shelves. This is a variant that I believe was only offered in, well, it was offered all around. There also is another variant where he comes with a Gatling gun, but this particular one is one that I was seeking out because I prefer the rifle. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, really appreciate the views. Really appreciate the comments. If you all could take a moment to smash that like button. And if you like the content, please subscribe. There's many, many more reviews and many more toy hunts to come. You guys take it easy. I'll catch you later. Don't forget to bring it down.